In my previous video, we discussed three off-grid solar diagrams, small, medium and large. You voted to go in depth on the large system. Let's break down a complete off-grid solar system with batteries. Stick to the end, where I will share the total cost and an option to add it as a backup to your grid tight system. These are the steps we are going to go through. I'm Nick, author of Off-Grid Solar Power Simplified. Let's build an off-grid system together, step by step. This is a simulation of the power consumption of a modest off-grid home. We need to add 1200 watt hours of idle consumption for the inverter. Let's round up to a consumption of 10 kilowatt hours per day. Heating the house and cooking are not included, because they require much more energy. I recommend using propane for both. In the comments, let me know what your daily consumption is. Using my load calculator tool, which you can find on my website, we enter a total of 10 kilowatt hours of daily consumption. I then select a 48 volt system and 2.5 days of autonomy. We can see that we need a 32,000 watt hour battery if we use lithium. If we use 3.5 sun hours for Atlanta in the US, we can see we need 7200 watts of solar panels to recharge the battery in one day. Now we know how many batteries and solar panels we need to give us 10 kilowatt hours of energy daily. But how should we wire the 7200 watts of solar? That's what I will talk about next. The EG4 6000XP off-grid inverter can have a maximum input power of 8000 watts of solar and a maximum input voltage of 480 volts with two MPPTs. Let's use the following solar panel from Santan Solar. The solar panel we will use is rated at 540 watts and has a VOC of 48.57 volts. Now we calculate the maximum amount of panels in the series string. 480 volts maximum input voltage divided by 48.57 volts times 1.25 equals 7.9 panels. We can see that we can wire a maximum of 7 panels in series per MPPT. Because 7 panels times 48.57 VOC times 1.25 equals 425 volts. This is less than a maximum allowed 480 volts. Are you still with me? I know it's quite a few calculations, but it's really worth doing it beforehand, or just as an exercise. Next, we check if the voltage is within the normal operating range of the MPPT. We multiply the VMP by the amount of solar panels in series. This becomes 41.49 volts times 7 panels equals 290 volts. This is within the recommended voltage range of the MPPT to work efficiently. So we have a system consisting of two series strings of 7 panels for a total of 14 solar panels rated at 540 watts each. Our maximum input power is 540 watts times 14 panels equals 7560 watts of solar. This is a little more than our required amount of 7200 watts. We do not need a solar disconnect switch because it's already integrated into the inverter. However, the manual says we should add a double pole breaker for every MPPT input. Let's figure out the minimum required wire size for the solar panels to the inverter. Let's say the panels are 100 feet or 30 meters away from the inverter. You will need a minimum 14 gauge or 2.5 mm square wire to keep the voltage drop under 3%. Now we know how to wire the solar panels. In the next step, we will calculate how many and what type of battery we need. But first, I would like to tell you about my free solar diagrams. Check the first link in the description to receive 7 solar wiring diagrams. I explain in detail how to size wires and fuses. This will help you make your own DIY installation. Next we will size the battery. Based on the load calculation, 
we require a 32,000 watt hour battery. If we divide by the normal voltage of a 48 volt server rack, we get 625 amp hours. 625 amp hours divided by 100 amp hour per battery equals 6.2. Since we have a bit more solar than required, we will use 6 server racks. Next, we need to size a fuse. The inverter already has a 200 amp breaker for the battery, so we don't need to add one. This is one advantage of using this off-grid inverter. A 2 gauge or 35 mm square welding cable can carry 205 amps. This cable is rated at 105 degrees Celsius insulation temperature. If you use cables rated for a lower temperature, you must size them larger. For example, if you were to use a wire rated for 90 degrees Celsius insulation, you require a 3 odd or 95 mm square cable, so be mindful about which cable you use. I will link my recommendations in the description. We will have 6 server racks. These will fit into one server rack enclosure. You can purchase the server racks, including the enclosure, in one package. Next, we will look at adding a generator to the system. If you have found this video helpful so far, consider subscribing to the channel to keep updated when I upload new videos like this. You can add a generator if you don't have enough sunshine in winter. The manual recommends a generator larger than 10 kW. However, you can reduce the size when you limit the charging power in the software. I recommend an inverter generator because it has low total harmonic distortion. This one is rated for 7600 watts on gasoline and 7200 watts on propane. You have to use a split phase output of the generator. I recommend using 70% of the generator's output power for optimal fuel efficiency. Thus, the generator should be limited to 5000 watts of charging power. We can adjust the charging power in the system settings. Search for the setting Max Generator Input Power and enter 5000 watts. The wire from the generator to the inverter should be 8 gauge or 10 mm square, same as the AC in and load output. Next, we will talk about grounding the system. If you decide to purchase anything mentioned in this video, you can do so through my links in the description. It helps me create more content like this, at no extra cost to you. The ground neutral bond happens in the inverter, so you don't have to bond the earth to neutral. You have to install these grounding wires to the grounding bus bar inside the inverter. From there, one 10 gauge or 6 mm square wire goes to your grounding rod. We have to ground the solar panel frames, the battery enclosure and the generator. These will go to the grounding bus bar inside the inverter. Only one grounding rod should be installed on your property, to eliminate grounding loops. Therefore, do not install a grounding rod near your solar panels. Did you know about grounding loops? Let me know your thoughts about grounding your system in the comments. The total cost of the components, or 14 solar panels, plus shipping, $2740. The EG4 off-grid inverter, $1450. Six server rack batteries and their enclosure, $7450. Wiring, $400. And extras, $300. The total cost for a complete off-grid solar system with batteries is $12,340 without a generator and racking for the solar panels. Links to the components are listed in the description. Do you have an off-grid system? And what was your cost? Let me know in the comments so we can learn from each other. The inverter is for off-grid usage only. If you want a grid-tight system, I recommend getting the EG4 18K PV or a Victor MultiPlus 2 with an MPPT. The 6000 XP cannot sync its sine wave with the grid, so feeding back power into the grid is impossible. I don't recommend using it for a grid tight system, however it's possible to do so with a transfer switch. They can be manual or automatic. 
we will connect the grid to the input of the transfer switch. We also connect this to the AC in on the inverter. That way, when the load needs more power and the grid is available, it will take energy from the battery and the grid to support the load. We will then connect the inverter's output to the transfer switch generator input. The transfer switch output goes to the main AC distribution board. It is basically a three-way switch. It's not UL rated, and I use this device as a demonstration. If you want to use an interlocking mechanism instead, which is UL rated, I recommend watching the video of a fellow YouTuber, Ray, which I will link in the description. Another plus about the system is that you don't need a $70 dongle like the Victron MK3 to USB to adjust the settings. The dongle is included in the product. If you are off-grid, this inverter is a good choice with its many settings and easy user interface. I recommend getting it from Current Connected. The link will be in the description. If you want to see more videos like this, press the like button. And I will see you in the next one.